Hi, it's the 20th of November 2011. I'm Bernie Goldbach and I am Top Goat on Twitter talking to you in my back garden about the Sunday Times and Sunday Business Post. Top of the news. Inside this paper comes from Adrian Weckler. He's talking about the Battle Royale, music business versus digital IT. And that references the Stop Online Piracy Act, SOPA. Big argument that's going to hit Ireland for sure. Adrian's point is, pretty simple question. If the government has to choose, economically, between digital IT industries or the entertainment industry, and then give away all the investment of one or the other, which one would it choose to spare? In my mind, you can't break the internet by taking on SOPA. Fair play to Adrian for bringing the argument to the front. Jennifer Connell, in the off-message section of the Agenda magazine, deals with the coalition partners. That's a government issue. Fine Gael, she says, in the manifesto, promised to tackle cronyism and feather bedding in politics. But you know what? Although that, those um, election year uh, promises and those election year politicking got a lot of people who typically voted for Fianna Foyle to come across the Fine Gael, there's no guarantee those people are going to stay with the government. There's a lot of like the same old, same old the way it was a few years ago. May Sexton, she cites May Sexton, who's a labor counselor, saying, it's although nothing has changed. I mean, I really wish, as, as Jennifer points out, that the government would make it a public uh, sourcing of the different board members, but it's going to be a long time coming. Let's go to the front of the Sunday Business Post, where the stories are also on the app. But I get, I get better stories this way. It just feels that way. The budget's going to reduce social charge for the lower paid. Front page story beneath Connolly and Pat Leahy. Basically, what I like about the budget speculation is that there's going to be a significant package to promote job creation. Where I work, that's good news. We like to get people in courses where we can help them get qualified. Well, some of the people that are currently on the courses that I teach are going to have a problem with going post-grad. But as Neve Connolly points out, there's probably going to be a loan scheme brought to bear for those level nine students. And if you're a, a startup, Richard Bruton, who's the Minister for Jobs, Enterprise, and Innovation, is finalizing plans for a uh, microfinance loan fund. And basically what it means is the state is going to act as a guarantor for some of the loan. That's a good thing, because a lot of these startups just can't get money. The banks are really cautious about loaning money now in Ireland. Budding entrepreneurs make the cut. Jillian Nels, Nels has a story about three different entrepreneurs, including Agata Stoinski, Stoinska of Blow Photo Magazine. She opened D-Light Studios in North Clarence Street in 2009. And there's a couple others. Um, engineer David uh, Daniel Bradfield has got a really cool air dryer, which reduces the cost of drying by about 90%. And Emma Murphy, shortlisted in social enterprises. She's doing an um, online self-help program aimed at men and women with eating disorders. That might be me. Hey, Rory Quinn's stealing the heat over your university fees. Neve Connolly has another story and writes about, uh, well, shows the minister signing a pledge he's not going to increase fees. And she cites it, uh, the, the quotation saying it's a barrier at the gate of third level education. We're proposing to remove it. Quinn told a conference before he was elected to the uh, current government. We, a students march in a stop fees program last week. Fair play to our guys. And Claude Mill taking the story and taking the initiative into the streets of Dublin. Where well, they might have met Bill. Bill, the application for a work permit turned down despite personal wealth and a track record in business. Interesting story written by Gavin Daly. The technology entrepreneur had money to invest in SOS Venture, had to fight for a work permit before he could actually do it. And um, it, it gives kind of a background to it. He was rejected three times before it was accepted. He doesn't know why it was turned down. And I, I stuck it on Google Plus and said, hey, hey Bill, did you just try to register as a sole trader? Can't you do that? Sunday Business Post on the side, Sunday Times front page. You can see the stuff that's all showing that the front page of the, of the paper is suggesting there would be more austerity ahead. Inside the paper, RT probes a broadcast that the famed priest. Really interesting story to me. Um, the issue, well, the story was called Time to Pray. A priest that had nothing to do with fathering, fathering a child was uh, depicted that way. And he got a big settlement, at least a million euro, probably at least a five million euro if you look behind the scenes. The issue that's running around in the popular press right now is, can you really trust 
the journalist, Aoife Cavanaugh now, or Ken O'Shea, the, the editor, and the else are doing. I mean, geez, pretty shocking to run a story like that when um, there really wasn't any evidence for it. The Outcast Who Gave Us the Modern World is an article by Michael Hanlon. It's about Alan Turing and the stuff he's done. Had he lived, he might have been able to jumpstart a new industrial revolution 20 years early in England instead of in Silicon Valley. Um, the article is a preface to a Channel 4 item called Britain's Greatest Codebreaker on Channel 4 on the 21st of November at 9 p.m. I gotta get a dish up so I can record these things. Also in the paper, Matt Cooper says it's time for the leaders to tackle the big picture. And he points out, look, she's probably a good woman, Breeze McManus, but could should she at age fifty three actually get hundred and fourteen thousand euro a year that has to be borrowed to pay for, for that to pay for that pension? It's a massive pension. And if they're cut back though, it's gonna cut back on everybody else downstream. So, here's the story now. I'm walking around Cashel looking for gifts like this Buy Signals Angel Cycle Helmet for 47 euro. Cool, isn't it? Yellow band around, non-flashing modes, big impact at night. And the Luma Cycle for 310 euro. God, you <laughs> I just love bright lights. I also like dark lights. That is to say, the streets of Cashel are showing um, plenty of Christmas charm right now. Polar bears, um, artistic renditions of uh, Pursuit of Daphne, and the Kilkenny Shop, one of my favorites. Although, truth be told, Mia would love to go back to the Disney Shop in Grafton Street and see Kevin. Check me out, flickr.com, stroke photo, stroke every size. Follow me on Top Gold if you're interested. I'll talk to you next week. It's Bernie Goldbach, Cash for Country Ireland, saying bye for now.